Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. You guys are in luck today because it's going to be a super packed 20 minute podcast, and we've got three of us here. So it's me, Peter, and our partner, Chris Tuff, who is just a freaking badass. And we're talking about something that we talk about frequently amongst the conversations we have the four um, things that really focus on us, uh, that we focus on. The four Time. freedoms, Craig. The four, four freedoms. freedoms. Thank you. Thank you. What are they? List them out. Chris. Go for it, Chris. Yeah. I mean, I think life can get overwhelming. And with this, these four things, just four things, uh, you can take it to the next level as an entrepreneur. It's time, money, purpose, and relationships. That's what it comes down to. So where do you guys want to start? I'd say start, let's start at freedom of time, right? Because this was my, this was always been my quest as an entrepreneur. It was where, you know, I wanted to do things when I want with who I want, when I wanted, it was mainly when I wanted. And so I wanted the abundance of time because I always felt so overwhelmed. So that's where I would like to start. Awesome. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about how you've kind of mastered. I mean, I'd say out of anyone, I use you in speeches in front of companies like <laughs> Nike is one of my best examples. And you know, which one I use Pete is, what? is, and I don't know how often you do this, but how, how you did that exercise that Naval said, which is figure out what your hourly rate is mm -hmm. and then figure out what you insource and what you outsource. And mm -hmm. what I tell people when I'm on stage is that I have a friend that's a dentist and he'll actually get people to come and fill up his cars with gas because he hates doing it and it's not worth his time. So you can either debunk that myth or say that it's real. No, it, that is a true story. They have to have that service because I did hate it. And I identified, I started writing down lists, Chris, of things that I just hated. And I was like, I'm going to eliminate some of these things. And it's not overnight, but getting rid of them over, over, over time. And it was also, I wanted to also create more time in my life because I had so many like entrepreneurial itches that I wanted to scratch beyond even owning dental practices and being a dentist, there were just so many things that like my brain was always going, I wanted to do this and start this and get into blockchain and start this. You know, so there were a lot of, I wanted time. I wanted time to be creative because I feel like that's one of my superpowers. And so until I could create that bandwidth in my life, I just, I was lacking fulfillment. Um, so time was a big one for me. Craig, what about you? So I always had this concept and I'm not actually sure where I got it from. I'm sure it was borrowed. I can't, I can't be too, uh, too intelligent to have thought this up myself, but I always talk about the three currencies in life, emotion, time, and money. So I'm looking at the four F, the, the four freedoms. I, I like to collapse purpose and relationships into emotion. So like before you make a decision to pay, what is the most replenishable resource for all of us? I don't care your financial position. It's going to be money. Money comes and mm. goes, we've lost it, we've made it. But emotion and time can never come back. If you spend a three week or three month or three hour period suffering an emotion, you're never gonna get that time back. You're never gonna get that emotional time, the emotion or the time back. So I, before, I, uh, before I'm about to do anything, I'm like, if this can be solved by money, even I'm not even speaking like if you have a lot of money, but if it can be solved with money, Choose not to spend the emotion and time as well. You can actually pay with one currency. You don't have to pay, pay with all three. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll have something bad happen. You know, the AC breaks $5,000. You're going to spend the $5,000 anyway. Spend the money. That's your currency. Save the time. Save the emotion. Don't suffer all of those three currencies. You can choose to pay with one. So I also look at it like freedom to and freedom from. That's a Naval thing as well. And I, I want to make sure I get that right. But like in the beginning, it's like freedom to freedom to go on vacation because you have enough money, freedom to have employees or relationships or fulfillment. But then ultimately you want freedom from, and that's more the time thing. So that's where you're at, Peter. So when you say, I don't want to do this stuff, I want freedom from having to fill freedom my from. Tank, yep. freedom from. So it's like in the beginning, it's freedom to, I want to be able to go to a restaurant. I don't want to have to eat ramen noodles. I want to make a little bit of money. I want to get a higher quality uh, standard of life or, or standard, you know, standard of living. And then ultimately it becomes freedom from, I think that's where the emotion and time come in. So let's ground it into practice. I mean, one thing that I, I, I've also found myself talking a lot about is uh, how a lot of dentists end up acting as a bottleneck. They feel like they have to do all things at the practice and they end up being overwhelmed. They end up being exhausted. And a lot of that does come down to time, right? So talk to us a little bit. We, we saw it hands-on with the evolution of some of the people in the mastermind, uh, Dr. Twi Dwight Bacora being one of those, but talk about how you guys have been able to 
um, offer solutions to not being that within the time realm uh, inside of practice. Well, one thing that jumps out, Peter, I'm sorry if I cut you there, but it's like freedom from freedom from clinical practice for those entrepreneurial dentists. And Peter, you're one of them. Mm -hmm. The bottleneck was like, okay, I've got it. You know, in dentistry, it's unfortunate, but like the idea that you only are working and I'm using air quotes for those that are not watching that you're only working if you're seeing patients. So all the work that you do to run a practice market at HR, every list of activities, if you're not doing dentistry, it's like, oh, he doesn't work today. And there's a lot of shame and guilt around that. So for those entrepreneurial dentists that actually love the art of building and running businesses, just you got to get free from the chair because you can't do it. You can't spend all day, you know, working in a practice and at 6 p.m. put on your entrepreneur hat. You'll be a crappy leader because of like you're trying to prep 10 teeth and Sally, the hygienist is upset. You don't have time for your people. You're going to be a bad leader. So I think freedom from dentistry is one thing that jumped out at me for the, for the, and, and you know, in the masterminders, when, when they declare that they want to be entrepreneurs, they have to get free from that. I think you're right, Craig. And actually the, you know, as of recently, the culture index that Dwight's exposed us to has really even reinforced that, uh, that, that hypothesis that I was like, you know, I really just need to be more, more visionary, more growing, more, more staying three steps ahead. And, and through that culture index, actually, they went through our whole organization and, and actually Dr. Curry and my office manager in on the conversation, he said, I'm really concerned because I'm not seeing someone who needs to be at this position. He was kind of referring to the visionary. And Vanessa was like, oh, well, you haven't had our founders. You haven't seen our his yet. He sent it over and he's like, oh my gosh, here's the guy. Now I feel much better, right? This guy is going to get things done. He's not going to care about your feelings. He's going to be, you know, so to your point, Craig, I, I kind of knew myself early on. I knew that I needed that freedom of time. Yeah, but we know, got our asses kicked though. I mean, and we got our not, asses kicked. Yeah. So like um, we, we found out the hard way, like, okay, those months, those years that I did that, I hated my life. Well, I, I mean, loved it though. I actually loved clinical dentistry. It's well, just I'm not that, saying that. It's that just my like pull it was stronger. My right. pull was stronger. And I knew that I could benefit many more lives by following my true purpose, right. Of like, uh, in my off being authentic with my creative and my vision and knowing that I could like play a little bit ahead of the game. Chris, I want to go back to something real quick. Cause I think, cause we talked about money and Craig, I know you're focusing on time, but I think a cool thing about freedom of money is that it allows you to take chances reading on some moonshot things. And I think I always refer to life as being like, you get one ticket, you're only here. You only get one ride. You don't get any do-overs in this life. And there are things that sometimes we get paralyzed to not do because we are fearful of money, not a, not having enough. And I have this weird, perverse relationship because at many times in my life, I didn't have any, actually most of my life I had none. And so I was always kind of paralyzed by the thought of, oh man, if I don't, something bad's going to happen if I let go of this. But I think money allows you to, if you're creative, it allows you to really flex that muscle and take moonshots and look moonshots by definition, you know, only one out of a hundred typically works, but when it works, it's like the most amazing thing on the planet. So I don't know why I wanted to harp on that, but that when I am reading this from the list, that's what it means to me is that I get to take creative and bold chances sometimes, because I know that like the bare needs of my family and my, and my employees are going to be met. Yeah. But money is one of those things too. And I agree with you hundred percent. Like it's, it's potential power and it's fuel and it's yeah, also, a state of, it's a state of mind as well. Having the security, like the, a buddy of mine once told me he was a redneck. He said, scare money. Don't make none. It's like when you have none, you can't deploy it. You get scared. You don't want to invest. And, you know, the fruit is on the farthest limb of the tree. You have to go out there to get it. But money is one of those things like, and Peter, you and I have private conversations where we remind ourselves, like, I, I remember like 10 years ago, if I could make X dollars mm -hmm. per year, my God, that would be amazing. And guess what? I'm making two X now the, of what I thought. And I still have to remind myself constantly, like, remember when you know, a grand was a lot of money. 500 was a lot of money. So you lose some context from it and, and it requires constant like art of, of understanding where you are and taking inventory of where you are. Let's unpack, um, let's unpack freedom of relationship, right? So there's, there are certain people that you love working with both inside and outside your business. And you want to spend more and more time, more of your time around them. So I think that's another like freedom to Craig, like freedom to, to spend more time with people you like and be very selective of the relationships you have. Chris, I remember the, one of the first times I ever met you because you're, I didn't know you, this was maybe what, four or five years ago. I remember sitting at lunch with you the first time because we were connected through a mutual friend and you being kind of like almost somewhat guarded. You're like, look, I have limited time. I have tons of friends already. 
And like, I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if you're in that, in that circle yet, so to speak. And don't be alarmed if, if you're not. And I think that you were very, I loved your candor because I think it's, I think life is again, life is short and, 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 and finding the right people on your bus at the right time is imperative, right? Good so, friends and good relationships. So would you say the same is true for your practice? Oh, for yeah, sure. The for sure. Because in the beginning, you're just happy to get someone willing to work with you. Cause you know, you don't, you haven't really built anything special. You don't have your values. You're not, you're just kind of winging it. You're not as busy as you should be. So it's hard to get powerful, great people to, you know, believe in something that hasn't been created yet. Once you have an up and running machine and a business is running, you have a reputation, it's easier to get those people. So I think you're just less discerning with who you hire. At least I was in the beginning. Cause I'm like, look, she's nice. She seems like she can answer the phone. Geez, I need somebody. But then you get discerning with, um, and, and I don't think it's being, um, it's not being judgmental. It's just being discerning of the relationships. I think the same thing is with, true in my own personal relationships. I was just happy when I moved back to Florida after I got down at a dental school, I was just happy for company. So the friends <laughs> I would have, I'm like, well, geez, you know, this person doesn't really have much in common with me, but you know, at least they want to go to dinner and I want to go to dinner and, you know, meet people and stuff like that. So as and, time if, goes and I on, think that goes to Craig, sorry. I think that goes to with being very selective with, this is the, the thing we talk about, Chris, I have, uh, you know, who will protect this house. And I don't know if you've seen that example, but I have those from the Under Armour commercial printed all over my office. And it talks about like being selective with who we want on our team. Because a toxic person, someone that just is filling a seat on the bus can destroy the community uh, of our company. And so I think that's freedom, freedom or have good relationships, you know, having, because we spend a lot of time with the people that we, that we work with. Right. And so, and those are the relationships and, and being able to be selective about that. Now, Grant, well, right I, now, I mean, it's amazing. I, I had a deep dive with a doctor and uh, his head of uh, a, a team lead. And uh, it, he was, they were talking to me because they're like, we've, we, I think we might have a culture problem and, and here's what's going on. And they started to explain basically this, this one employee who's their head hygienist, right? And she just crushes it with goals, but she is not a team player. Mm -hmm. She always wants things that are on uh, her own kind of um, timeline and rule system she's the exception every single time. And after they went and explained it, I was like, you, you, both of you, you're kidding yourselves. You've got to get rid of this toxic employee. And right now we are living in an environment where, you know, call it the great quit, call it whatever you want to call it. But we are, everyone feels like they are struggling to attract good talent, but yet we're not looking inward and asking ourselves whether or not we have the right culture where relationships can truly thrive. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and Craig, I call you out as one of my favorite examples of you can see the fun and camaraderie within everyone's social feeds because they're posting these fun Instagram. You're having fun at work. And if you are not doing that, you are not going to be able to attract that talent. And you're going to have to hold on to those toxic employees that make relationships. Hor they're just poisoning that well of mm -hmm. relationships. I think it's important what you're pointing out, guys, because a low producing toxic person is a no brainer. No one ever thinks about those people. You, you, you're toxic and you suck. That's easy. The, the blind spot for all of us, and this is the commonality, is like these amazing producers. They're like racehorses. When they run straight, they're fast, but racehorses throw you off and they run sideways and they're really hard to manage. So there's a blind spot in, in my life. The most toxic people were the, the highest producers. In my own experience, you know, the ones that were most toxic were also the highest producers. And I was fearful around that. Um, really appreciate you, Peter, for being there during those tough times. But no matter, we're talking to you, if you have someone that you know has to go, but you think that you can't lose their re revenue, that's not, that's never the case. L you got to lose that person. You will open up space and you will grow leaders uh, behind in, in, that, in that wake. That toxic person is costing you a lot. So that's like freedom. That's the emotion, time, and money. You, get, you think you're going to pay with money or you think you're going to pay uh, you know, uh, with time. You're not. You're, you're going to make more money. You're going to have more, more freedom motion and more time, less management of that person. So what about purpose then, guys? Like, so, I mean, I think that's one missing piece of this. this right? I think it's the it, final it freedom. It's the final freedom. And I think it's the hardest to define uh, because most of your life, you're just kind of going through what you thought you should do or what you, maybe what was driving you because you thought you'd make a great, 
a living or an income or whatever. It's not till I don't think you get to really find true purpose. Maybe some people do, but those are the lucky ones. I don't think you get to find true purpose until you've kind of met all the aforementioned, right? When you've had some time to kind of get to know yourself, right? When you've had some money to kind of experiment, when you've had relationships that can support your, your purpose, you know, and I think that's the final, the final freedom is, is, is knowing your authentic purpose. And if it's being an entrepreneur, that's impactful because you can impact tons of lives on this, on this planet. Um, and I think entrepreneurs can be the greatest contributors of money and opportunity and capabilities and all the things. Well, they're, so, they're the ones that change the world, they're everything the ones. that we enjoy. That's it. So I think that's why Craig, we, you know, you always talk about, you always, I hear you saying, you know, knowing thyself. And I think the ultimate knowing thyself is knowing thy purpose. Um, because there's no, you know, I know I said this already in the podcast, but there's no redos. There's no like, ah, shit, I'm 80 years old. You know what I should have done? You lot, yeah. you, you, you don't have time to do that anymore. It's over. The ride is over. You're getting off of the roller coaster. Yeah. Well, I, I think I well, sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, Craig. Well, I think one thing is that um, everything, the, the, the time, the money and the relationships, there's a scientific approach, there's books, there's a recipe, there's a formula, how to do that. There's ways to kind of almost hack your way through time, money and relationships, you know, I think, you know, uh, the, the art of influencing people or whatever those books are. I don't, I don't, I don't know all those, those older books, but Purpose is the one thing that you can't hack. It's the conversation you have with mm-hmm. yourself. Everything else is an external conversation. There you go. That's so the purpose is you got to do your own work. I was going to lunch with someone who's very valuable to me as a person and an employee today. And she's like, look, I, I did this. I did that. I'm getting burnt out. And I reminded her, she's going on a two week vacation. I reminded her like, look, what you need to do is not get away from what you do. Because that'll give you some distance, but you're going to use this distance as a contemplative time to do the work. Purpose requires internal work. That's the one that you can't hack your way. There's no book like the three steps to purpose. You know, it's like you got to, you got to have, it's the conversation you have with yourself is your purpose. And you've got to put a stake in the ground. And I always tell people when they're asking me about purpose is every single person around me knows what my purpose is because I, I scream it from the, from the rooftops, which is to inspire and connect. And I th- just put a stake in the ground. Everyone listening, put a stake in the ground, be, be, tr- be truthful with who you are and right. just plant that stake down and then start marching towards it. And one thing that has astounded me with dentistry is I've become, I mean, through this whole process and being immersed in the mastermind and bulletproof is that there truly is something for everyone in dentistry. And it's not one size fits all. It's exactly what you want it to be. And that's the beautiful thing about it. It's, it's, it literally can be anything you want it to be. You can, you could be like, we were talking about earlier today. You could love blue collar people because your uncle was a blue collar guy. You could open up a practice bar, a car factory or whatever. And you could serve those people. It's literally whatever you want it to be. But I love, you know, you, you touched on something, you know, your purpose is to inspire and connect and you scream it from the rooftops. It's like, there's a, a saying before you make the first lie, you have to first agree to lie to yourself. So when you make a lie to the world, you first have to con and lie to yourself. And you say, this is okay. I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to do it. And you let it go. So in order to communicate your purpose to the world, you have first have to convince yourself. So authenticity, having integrity is just believing your own BS, <laughs> you know, and it's not a bullshit it's a BS bullshit or belief system. You actually have to believe what you're doing. So purpose requires uh, an art. art, art, there's an art to purpose. It's not a scientific formula, recipe-based approach. It's how you live your life and how you deal with things and how the conversations and how you maneuver in tough times. That's actually what creates purpose. And it's a creative process. If you're feeling unfulfilled, w- wiggle it, make it, make it different, massage it move, it, move it a different way. And you can actually get to the point where you have that purpose back. I love purpose. I, you know, and I, I live for that. And um, I, I, I love getting to do what I do, but I, I recognize that it was not scientific. It was very much an art form. All right. So take us home, Pete and Craig, take us home with, with, as we look at the, 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 the four pieces, like how do you want to leave listeners right now? I would say audit of the four things you heard, take inventory of where you are, right? If, if, if one of them is paralyzing and you don't have enough of it, meaning you, let's say you don't have enough time in your day, I'm so busy, right? Audit your day, like become less busy. Right. If you don't have enough money, there are ways to figure out how to make more money. Right. I mean, that's what kind of what, what, what we do, how to be more successful. We teach that in dentistry. Um, 
You know, if, if your relationships are all suck or they're pa- are very parasitic or they're very one way, it's time to audit those relationships and look for, you know, a symbiosis where you're feeling, you know, where you're the, the where you're getting something from that relationship. And then I think last would be just the purpose, right? Are you truly authentically living your true purpose and what you're doing? And if you're not, it's okay. Like I, for so long, I think for literally for the first 40 years of my life, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. Or, who, or what I was really good at or where I should focus the rest of my life. But, but I think it's a great place to just sit and audit your time. Agreed. I have one more thing to add. Uh, I, I think choose the currency you're going to pay in. Um, choose which currency you're going to pay in. Sometimes um, time is the easiest way, but don't pay in all three. Don't pay the money, pay the emotion and pay the time. Just be mm-hmm. done with it. Release yourself from the other two if you're going to choose one. Choose one. I like it. All right, everybody, let's wrap for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the, uh, the Bulletproof Dental Practice podcast, and we'll see you next time. Over and out. See you guys.